Mr. Jordan. Thank the Chairman. Mr. Whitaker, why did Rod Rosenstein send a memo to Bob Mueller on August 2nd, 2017, concerning the scope of the special counsel investigation? Congressman, thank you for that question, and I know this is of a great interest to you, uh, and, I, and I hope we can have a, a discussion about this today. The uh, special counsel regulations require a uh, scoping of the special counsel's investigation that identifies uh, the subject uh, and the targets of the investigation. So I, I am certain that it, it would have identified uh, the scope of the investigation pursuant to the special counsel's. Well, my question is, my question is not what, well, I'll get to that. My question is why, because it was two and a half months after the special counsel was formed. So let's go back to the beginning document, which you told the chairman earlier you were, you're completely briefed on the special counsel's investigation. I want to go, it's just a one page document. Order number 3915-2017 says this, Mr. Whitaker, the special counsel is authorized to conduct the investigation, including any matters that arose or may arise directly from the investigation. That's pretty broad. Agree? Yeah, and, and in my experience, it's consistent with other appointments of special counsels. Um, That's fine. I, mean, I think it may be too broad, but it's, it's, it's as, bit, as broad as you can get, one page order, go do your investigation, and anything that arises out of it, you can investigate as well. But then two and a half months later, we get this, this three-page memo from Rod Rosenstein, acting attorney general to Robert Mueller, special counsel, title says, scope of the investigation, definition of authority. This is what confuses me, because in this memo that only Mr. Mueller and my guess is you and Mr. Rosenstein and a few people the Justice Department have seen, most of it's blacked out, in this memo it says this, the following allegations were within the scope of the investigation at the time of your appointment and are within the scope of the order. Well, if that's true, why do you have to say it? If you could do it all along, why do you have to put it in a memo? Congressman Jordan, uh, first of all, I was, uh, because of General Sessions' recusal from the special counsel's investigation, I was also recused from that investigation. Um, and so I, I was not. I'm not asking, I'm not asking that. I'm asking, you said you were fully briefed. The chairman well, asked but you're you. Asking, that first you're half. asking me why at the time Rod Rosenstein. I'm asking you why two and a half months after the broadest order you can have, why did Rod Rosenstein say, hey, you could do this all along, but now I'm putting it in a memo? And I'll tell you what really troubles me, Mr. Whitaker, is right after that statement, the following allegations were within the scope of the investigation at the time of your appointment and are within the scope of the order. Right after that, you know what? You know what happens? Everything's redacted. Look at this. The whole darn thing. So if you could do it all along and you have to send a memo to them two and a half months later, and then you redact everything after it. You know what's under the redactions, Mr. Whitaker? I do, sir. You do. Are there names under the redactions, Mr. Whitaker? In my experience with investigations generally, uh, you would not have a public document identify targets or subject matter of an investigation, especially if someone is not ultimately Did, charged with a crime. Let me, let me frame it this way. Did Rod Rosenstein give the special counsel the authority to investigate specific Americans? Congressman, Mr. Rosenstein, acting as the Attorney General because of Mr. Sessions' recusal, gave authorization uh, and jurisdiction to the Special Counsel. Um, and so, yes, under the Special Counsel regulations, that's the whole purpose of the no, Special no, Counsel. No, no. So I, I want to make you said yes. So there are specific names two and a half months into the investigation that Rod Rosenstein gave the Special Counsel specific American names to go investigate. Congressman, uh, as because you know, it, I mean, if that's the case, and it's, well, I, I hope you, I, I want to know yes or no. As I hope you, you know, answer. this is a, the subject of an ongoing investigation, and, and I spoke to you generally about investigation. But I'm asking you a specific, or, or let, let me ask it this way: Can you give us assurances that there are not specific names under this 70 percent redacted memo that the spe, that Rod Rosenstein sent to the special counsel? Congressman Jordan, uh, this, I know this is, a, and you know why I'm asking this, Mr. Mr. Attorney General. Because in this country, we don't investigate people, we investigate crimes. And if there are specific American citizens' names in this redacted, and I asked Mr. Rosenstein to see this, and he got all mad and huffy with me in his office and wouldn't show it to me. But I think the American people, if, if this alters changes and names of specific Americans, the scope of the investigation of the special counsel, don't you think it's appropriate for the American citizens to know 
the full parameters of an investigation into the guy they made president of the United States. Congressman, let me be very specific about this, because you are right. We investigate crimes, not individuals. And that's why I'm asking the question. I would like a yes or no answer. Do you, are there names mentioned under this redacted portion of this memo? On that, as I, as I mentioned before, that memo props up a confidential investigation, as is every Department of Justice. Simple question, Mr. Whitaker. Are there names, specific American names mentioned in this redacted, 70 percent redacted memo that happens two and a half months after the special counsel gets his order to start his investigation, where he was given the broadest latitude you can possibly have? I mean, the gentleman has expired. The witness may answer the question. I would just refer the congressman to the general practice of the Department of Justice that we investigate crimes and not individuals. Thank you. Mr. Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Attorney General, the uh, Inspector General of the GSA we have a rather scathing report on the GSA's decision not to address significant issues concerning the government's post office and its lease to the Trump family. Uh, concerning the emoluments clause. Mm -hmm. And it was said that uh, GSA attorneys said they did not refer the matter to OLC, but a senior attorney told the IG that the OLC, Office of Legal Counsel, knew about the old post office lease and it was up to them to do something. Are you aware of anything the Justice Department did to look into violations of emoluments clause at the Trump Hotel? Congressman, the emoluments clause as it relates to the Trump Hotel is the subject of several ongoing litigation matters. Right. And, and so while I can acknowledge that I am aware of the, um, not only of the situation you described, but generally the litigation surrounding the emoluments clause, as the acting attorney general sitting here today, I'm unable to talk specifically about those cases. You can't say if there are any memos from the Office of Legal Counsel regarding emoluments clause violations, limitations? Congressman, as I, as I sit here today, those the emoluments clause, uh, as it relates to the Trump Organization, especially the hotel in Washington, D.C., is the subject of ongoing litigation. And the Justice Department's helping to represent the president in those suits, is he not? Is that appropriate when it's a violation of him making personal monies out of the Trump Hotel and being charged with violations of the Emoluments Clause by not reporting it to the, con to the Congress as he's supposed to by the Constitution? Shouldn't he have his personal lawyers and not Justice Department lawyers represent him for this nefarious conduct? Congressman, I can understand that this is an important issue to you. But as it relates to the emoluments clause and the Department of Justice defense of the President of the United States, it is well within our purpose to be involved in that case. You said that if, they, if the, the special counsel's investigation looked into President Trump's finances, it would be crossing a red line. You said that, I think, in a television uh, uh, interview. The Attorney General has made clear that Mr. Rosenstein told the special counsel he could go into any matters that arose or made arise directly from the investigation, if matters arose from the investigation, directly or indirectly, that the Trump family owed lots of money to Russian oligarchs and people real close to Putin, and that affected the actions that they took as the President of the United States on behalf of the United States of America, would you agree that that was not crossing a red line, but in fact was a red line from Moscow that we need to look into? Congressman, when I made that statement, um, I was a private citizen and had no publicly available information. I, I only had publicly available information. And so I made that as a uh, commentator and not as the acting attorney general of the United States. I am very familiar with the responsibilities of my office as acting attorney general. And we make our decisions based on the law and the facts on a case by case basis. So that's no longer your opinion. It's not crossing a red line for him to look into the finances if they might have interfered with the objective judgment of the president concerning his duty of trust to the United States of America and not to his personal financial interests or his families. Congressman, as I, as I mentioned earlier, at the Department of Justice, and as, as long as I'm acting attorney general, we're going to follow the law and the facts wherever they may lead, and uh, we're going to do our jobs with fidelity. Thank you, sir. Let me ask you this. There have been a, there's been a conviction in the special counsel investigation of Mr. Manafort. Jury trial, conviction. There have been guilty pleas from Flynn, Manafort, Gates, Papadopoulos, and Michael Cohen, and dozens of indictments, including 13 Russian nationals, three Russian companies, and Roger Stone. Would you say special, the special counsel's investigation is a witch hunt? Are you overseeing a witch hunt? 
Congressman, as I've mentioned previously, the special counsel's investigation is an ongoing investigation, and so I think it would be inappropriate for me to— But you wouldn't oversee a witch hunt, would you? You'd stop a witch hunt, wouldn't you? Congressman, uh, it would be inappropriate for me to talk about an ongoing investigation. You said that you're not interfering with the special counsel's investigation. Have you denied him any funds he's requested at all? Congressman, I can tell this is an important issue for you, but let's— It's me... an important issue for the American public and for the, United... the whole world. Congressman, to answer your question directly, I have not denied any funds to the special counsel's investigation. Have you denied him the opportunity to go any areas where he wanted to investigate or any matters of investigation? Congressman, as I previously testified, I have not interfered with the special counsel's investigation. I yield back the balance of my time.